Six days before the Passover, Jesus went to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from death. They prepared a dinner for him there, which Martha helped serve. Lazarus was one of those who were sitting at the table with Jesus. Then Mary took a whole pint of a very expensive perfume made of pure nard, poured it on Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The sweet smell of the perfume filled the whole house. One of Jesus' disciples, Judas Iscariot, the one who was going to betray him said, Why wasn't this perfume sold? For 300 silver coins. And the money given to the poor. He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He carried the money bag and would help himself from it. Leave her alone. Let her keep what she has for the day of my burial. You will always have poor people with you. But you will not always have me. Jesus! A large number of people heard that Jesus was in Bethany. So they went there, not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from death. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus too, because on his account, many Jews were rejecting them and believing in Jesus. Jesus. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the Passover festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, praise God. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the King of Israel. Jesus found a donkey and rode on it, just as the scripture says. Do not be afraid, city of Zion. Here comes your king, riding on a young donkey. His disciples did not understand this at the time, but when Jesus had been raised to glory, they remembered that the scripture said this about him and that they had done this for him. The people who had been with Jesus when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from death had reported what had happened. That was why the crowd met him because they heard he had performed this miracle. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, we are not succeeding at all. Look, the whole world is following him. Some Greeks were among those who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during the festival. They went to Philip, he was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. And the two of them went and told Jesus. The hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. And I'm telling you the truth. A grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain, unless it is dropped into the ground and dies. If it 
does die, then it produces many grains. Those who love their own life will lose it. Those who hate their own life in this world will keep it for life eternal. Whoever wants to serve me must follow me, so that my servant will be with me where I am, and my father will honor anyone who serves me. Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me. But that is why I came. So that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven. I have brought glory to it, and I will do so again. The crowd standing there heard the voice, and some of them said it was thunder, while others said an angel spoke to him. It is not for my sake that this voice spoke, but for yours. Now is the time for this world to be judged. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. In saying this, he indicated the kind of death he was going to suffer. Our Lord tells us that the Messiah will live forever. How then can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Light will be among you a little longer. Continue on your way while you have the light, so that the darkness will not come upon you. For the one who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. Believe in the light then while you have it, so that you will be the people of the light. After Jesus said this, he went off and hid himself from them. Even though he had performed all these miracles in their presence, they did not believe in him, so that what the prophet Isaiah had said might come true. Lord, who believed the message we told? To whom did the Lord reveal his power? And so they were not able to believe because Isaiah also said, God has blinded their eyes and closed their minds so that their eyes would not see and their minds would not understand and they would not turn to me, says God, for me to heal them. Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. Even then, many of the Jewish authorities believed in Jesus but because of the Pharisees, they did not talk about it openly, so as not to be expelled from the synagogue. They loved human approval rather than the approval of God. Jesus said in a loud voice, Whoever believes in me, believes not only in me, but also in him who sent me. Whoever sees me, sees also him who sent me. I have come into the world as light so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in the darkness. If people hear my message and do not obey it, I will not judge them. I came not to judge the world, but to save it. Those who reject me and do not accept my message have one who will judge them. The words I have spoken will be their judge on the last day. This is true, because I have not spoken on my own authority. But the Father who sent me has commanded me what I must say and speak. And I know that his command brings eternal life. What I say then is what the Father has told me to say.
It was now the day before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. He had always loved those in the world who were his own, and he loved them to the very end. Jesus and his disciples were at supper. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, the thought of betraying Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him complete power. He knew that he had come from God and was going to God. So he rose from the table, took off his outer garment, and tied a towel round his waist. Then he poured some water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter. Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? You do not understand now what I am doing, but you will understand later. Never, at any time, will you wash my feet. If I do not wash your feet, you will no longer be my disciple. Lord, do not wash only my feet, then. Wash my hands and head, too. <laughs> Those who have taken a bath are completely clean and do not need to wash themselves, except for their feet. All of you are clean. All except one. Jesus already knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said, all of you except one are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet, he put his outer garment back on and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand what I have just done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and it is right that you should do so because that is what I am. I, your Lord and teacher, have just washed your feet. You then should wash one another's feet. I have set an example for you, so that you will do just what I have done for you. I am telling you the truth. No slaves are greater than their master, and no messengers are greater than the one who sent them. Now that you know this truth, how happy you will be if you put it into practice. I'm not talking about all of you. I know those I have chosen. But the scripture must come true that says the man who shared my food turned against me. I tell you this now before it happens. So that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. I am telling you the truth. Whoever receives anyone I send receives me also. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me.
After Jesus had said this, he was deeply troubled and declared openly, I am telling you the truth. One of you is going to betray me. The disciples looked at one another, completely puzzled about whom he meant. One of the disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was sitting next to Jesus. Simon Peter motioned to him. Ask him whom he is talking about. So that disciple moved closer to Jesus' side. Who is it, Lord? I will dip some bread in the sauce and give it to him. He is the man. So he took a piece of bread, dipped it, and gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. Hurry, and do what you must. None of the others at the table understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas was in charge of the money bag, some of the disciples thought that Jesus had told him to go and buy what they needed for the festival, or to give something to the poor. Judas accepted the bread and went out at once. It was night. After Judas had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man's glory is revealed. Now God's glory is revealed through him. And if God's glory is revealed through him, and God will reveal the glory of the Son of Man in himself. And he will do so at once. My children, I shall not be with you very much longer. You will look for me, but I tell you now, what I told the Jewish authorities. You cannot go where I am going. <laughs> and now I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. If you have love for one another, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. Where are you going, Lord? You cannot follow me now where I am going. But later you will follow me. Lord, why can't I follow you now? I am ready to die for you. Are you really ready to die for me? I am telling you the truth. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you do not know me. Do not be worried and upset. Believe in God. And believe also in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go, prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way to get there? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you have known me, you will know my father also. And from now on, you do know him. And you have seen him. Lord, show us the father. That is all we need. 
For a long time I have been with you all. Yet you do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Why then do you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe, Philip, that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I have spoken to you do not come from me. The Father who remains in me does his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. If not, believe because of the things I do. I am telling you the truth. Those who believe in me will do what I do. Yes, they will do even greater things. Because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask for in my name. So that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper who will stay with you forever. He is the spirit who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him because it cannot see him or know him. But you know him because he remains with you and is in you. When I go, you will not be left all alone. I will come back to you. In a little while, the world will see me no more. But you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. When that day comes, you will know that I am in my Father and that you are in me, just as I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. My Father will love those who love me. I too will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, Lord, how can it be that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Those who love me will obey my teaching. My father will love them, and my father and I will come to them and live with them. Those who do not love me do not obey my teaching. And the teaching you have heard is not mine, but comes from the father who sent me. I have told you this while I am still with you. The help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and make you remember all that I have told you. Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. You heard me say to you, I'm leaving, but I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father, for he is greater than I. And I've told you this now, before it all happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I cannot talk with you much longer, because the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know. I love the Father, and that is why I do everything as he commands me. Come, let us go from this place. I am the real vine, and my Father is the gardener. He breaks off every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and he prunes every branch that does bear fruit, so that it will be clean and bear more fruit. You have been made clean already by the teaching I have given you. Remain united to me. And I will remain united to you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It can do so only if it remains in the vine. In the same way, you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. And you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will bear much fruit. For you can do nothing without me. Those who do not remain in me are thrown out like a branch and dry up. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire, where they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you will ask for anything you wish, and you shall have it. My Father's glory is shown by your bearing much fruit and in this way, you become my disciples. 
I love you. Just as the father loves me. Remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have obeyed my father's commands. And remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My commandment is this, love one another just as I love you. The greatest love you can have for your friends is to give your life for them. And you are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because servants do not know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because I have told you everything I heard from my father. You did not choose me. I chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit. The kind of fruit that endures. And so, the Father will give you whatever you ask of him in my name. This, then, is what I command you. Love one another. If the world hates you, just remember that it has hated me first. If you belong to the world, then the world would love you as its own. But I chose you from this world, and you do not belong to it. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. Slaves are not greater than their master. If people persecuted me, they will persecute you too. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours too. But they will do all this to you because you are mine. For they do not know the one who sent me. They would not have been guilty of sin if I had not come and spoken to them. As it is, they no longer have any excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me, hates my father also. They would not have been guilty of sin if I had not done among them the things that no one else ever did. As it is, they have seen what I did. And they hate both me and my father. This, however, was bound to happen, so that what is written in their law may come true. They hated me for no reason at all. The Helper will come, the Spirit who reveals the truth about God and who comes from the Father. I will send him to you from the Father, and he will speak about me. And you too will speak about me, because you have been with me from the very beginning. I have told you this, so that you will not give up your faith. You will be expelled from the synagogues. And the time will come when those who kill you will think that by doing this, they are serving God. People will do these things to you because they have not known either the Father or me. But I have told you this, so that when the time comes for them to do these things, you will remember what I told you. I did not tell you these things at the beginning, for I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me where I am going. And now that I have told you, your hearts are full of sadness. But I am telling you the truth. It is better for you that I go away. Because if I do not go, the Helper will not come to you. But if I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove to the people of the world that they are wrong about sin, and about what is right, and about God's judgment. They are wrong about sin because they do not believe in me. They are wrong about what is right because I am going to the Father and you will not see me anymore. And they are wrong about judgment because the ruler of this world has already been judged. I have much more to tell you, but now it would be too much for you to bear. When, however, the Spirit comes, who reveals the truth about God. He will lead you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but he will speak of what he hears and will tell you of things to come. He will give me glory because he will take what I say and tell it to you. 
All that my father has is mine. That is why I said that the spirit will take what I give him and tell it to you. In a little while, you will not see me anymore. And then a little while later, you will see me. Some of his disciples asked among themselves, what does this mean? He tells us that in a little while we will not see him, and then a little while later we will see him. And he also says, it is because I am going to the Father. What does this a little while mean? We don't know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to question him. I said, in a little while you will not see me. And then a little while later you will see me. Is this what you are asking about among yourselves? I am telling you the truth. You will cry and weep, but the world will be glad. You will be sad, but your sadness will turn into gladness. When a woman is about to give birth, she is sad because the hour of suffering has come. But when the baby is born, she forgets her suffering because she is happy that a baby has been born into the world. That is how it is with you. Now you are sad, but I will see you again. And your hearts will be filled with gladness, the kind of gladness that no one can take away from you. When that day comes, you will not ask me for anything. I am telling you the truth. The Father will give you whatever you ask of him in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, so that your happiness may be complete. I have used figures of speech to tell you these things. But the time will come when I will not use figures of speech, but will speak to you plainly about the Father. When that day comes, you will ask him in my name. And I do not say that I will ask him in your behalf. For the Father himself loves you. He loves you because you love me and have believed that I came from God. I did come from the Father. And I came into the world. And now I am leaving the world going to the Father. Then his disciples said to him, Now you are speaking plainly, without using figures of speech. We know now that you know everything. You do not need to have someone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you believe now? The time is coming, it is already here, when all of you will be scattered, each of you to your own home and I will be left all alone. But I am not really alone, because the Father is with me. I have told you this so that you will have peace by being united to me. The world will make you suffer, but be brave. I have defeated the world. After Jesus finished saying this, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that the Son may give glory to you. For you gave him authority over all people, so that he might give eternal life to all those you gave him. And eternal life means to know you, the only true God, and to know Jesus Christ, whom you sent. I have shown your glory on earth. I have finished the work you gave me to do. Father, give me glory in your presence now, the same glory I had with you before the world was made. I have made you known to those you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me. They have obeyed your word, and now they know that everything you gave me comes from you. I gave them the message that you gave me, and they received it. They know that it is true that I came from you, and they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you gave me, for they belong to you. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and my glory is shown through them. And now I am coming to you. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. 
Holy Father, keep them safe by the power of your name. The name you gave me. So that they may be one. Just as you and I are one. While I was with them, I kept them safe by the power of your name, the name you gave me. I protected them, and not one of them was lost, except the man who was bound to be lost. So that the scripture might come true. And now I am coming to you, and I say these things in the world, so that they may have my joy in their hearts in all its fullness. I gave them your message, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. But I do not ask you to take them out of the world. But I do ask you to keep them safe from the evil one. Just as I do not belong to the world, they do not belong to the world. Dedicate them to yourself by means of the truth. Your word is truth. I sent them into the world just as you sent me into the world. And for their sake, I dedicate myself to you in order that they too may be truly dedicated to you. I pray not only for them, but also for those who believe in me because of their message. I pray that they may all be one. May they be in us, just as you were in me and I am in you. May they be one so that the world will believe that you sent me. I gave them the same glory you gave me, so that they may be one just as you and I are one. I in them and you in me. So that they may be completely one, in order that the world may know that you sent me, and that you love them as you love me. You have given them to me, and I want them to be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, the glory you gave me. For you loved me before the world was made. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you sent me. I made you known to them, and I will continue to do so in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and so that I also may be in them. After Jesus had said this prayer, he left with his disciples and went across Kidron Brook. There was a garden in that place, and Jesus and his disciples went in. Judas, the traitor, knew where it was because many times Jesus had met there with his disciples. So Judas went to the garden, taking with him a group of Roman soldiers and some temple guards sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were armed and carried lanterns and torches. Jesus knew everything that was going to happen to him, so he stepped forward and asked them, Who is it you are looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. Judas the traitor was standing there with them when Jesus said to them, I am he. <laughs> they moved back and fell to the ground. Again, Jesus asked them, Who is it you are looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. I have already told you that I am he. If then you are looking for me, let these others go. He said this so that what he had said might come true. Father, I have not lost even one of those you gave me. Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave, cutting off his right ear. The name of the slave was Malchus. Put your sword back in its place. Do you 
you think that I will not drink the cup of suffering which my father has given me? Then the Roman soldiers, with their commanding officer and the Jewish guards, arrested Jesus, tied him up, and took him first to Annas. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jewish authorities that it was better that one man should die for all the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. That other disciple was well known to the high priest, so he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest's house, while Peter stayed outside by the gate. Then the other disciple went back out, spoke to the girl at the gate, and brought Peter inside. Aren't you also one of the disciples of that man? No. I'm not. It was cold, so the servants and guards had built a charcoal fire and were standing around it, warming themselves. So Peter went over and stood with them, warming himself. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have always spoken publicly to everyone. All my teaching was done in the synagogues and in the temple where all the people come together. I have never said anything in secret. Why then do you question me? Question the people who heard me. Ask them what I told them. They know what I said. How dare you talk? I have said anything wrong. Tell everyone here what it was. But if I am right in what I have said, why do you hate me? Then Annas sent him, still tied up, to Caiaphas, the high priest. Peter was still standing there, keeping himself warm. So the others said to him, aren't you also one of the disciples of that man? No, I am not. But Peter denied it. One of the high priest's slaves, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, spoke up. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? No. And at once, a rooster crowed. Early in the morning, Jesus was taken from Caiaphas' house to the governor's palace. The Jewish authorities did not go inside the palace, for they wanted to keep themselves ritually clean in order to be able to eat the Passover meal. So Pilate went outside to them and asked, What do you accuse this man of? We would not have brought him to you if he had not committed a crime. Then you yourselves take him and try him according to your own law. We are not allowed to put anyone to death. This happened in order to make come true what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he would die. Pilate went back into the palace and called Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? Does this question come from you? Or have others told you about me? Do you think I'm a Jew? It was your own people and the chief priests who handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom does not belong to this world. If 
my kingdom belonged to this world, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish authorities. No. My kingdom does not belong here. Are you a king, then? You say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this one purpose. To speak about the truth. Whoever belongs to the truth... ...listens to me. <sighs> and what is truth? Then Pilate went back outside to the people and said to them, I cannot find any reason to condemn him, but... According to the custom you have, I always set free a prisoner for you during the Passover. Do you want me to set free for you? The king of the Jews? They answered him with a shout. Give us Barabbas! Give us Barabbas! Barabbas was abandoned. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him whipped. The soldiers made a crown out of thorny branches and put it on his head. Then they put a purple robe on him and came to him and said, Long live the king of the Jews. And they went up and slapped him. Pilate went back out once more and said to the crowd, Look, I will bring him out here to you to let you see that I cannot find any reason to condemn him. Look, here is the man. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him then, and crucify him. I find no reason to condemn him. We have a law that says he ought to die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid. He went back into the palace, then asked Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus did not answer. He will not speak to me. Remember, I have the authority to set you free, and also to have you crucified. You have authority over me only because it was given to you by God. So the man who handed me over to you is guilty of a worse sin. When Pilate heard this, he tried to find a way to set Jesus free. If you set him free, that means you are not the emperor's friend. Anyone who claims to be a king is a rebel against the emperor.
had heard these words, he took Jesus outside and sat down on the judge's seat in the place called the Stone Pavement. In Hebrew, the name is Gabbatha. It was then almost noon of the day before the Passover. Pilate said to the people, Here is your king. Kill him. Do you want me to crucify your king? The only king we have is the emperor. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took charge of Jesus. He went out carrying his cross and came to the place of the skull, as it is called. In Hebrew, it is called Golgotha. There they crucified him. And they also crucified two other men, one on each side, with Jesus between them. Pilate wrote a notice and had it put on the cross. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, is what he wrote. Many people read it because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city. The notice was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. The chief priest said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. What I have written stays written. After the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier. They also took the robe, which was made of one piece of woven cloth without any seams in it. The soldiers said to one another, Let's not tear it. Let's throw dice to see who will get it. This happened in order to make the scripture come true. They divided my clothes among themselves and gambled for my robe. And this is what the soldiers did. Standing close to Jesus' cross were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved, standing there. He is your son. 
Then he said to the disciple, She is your mother. From that time, the disciple took her to live in his home. Jesus knew that by now, everything had been completed. And in order to make the scripture come true, he said, I am thirsty. A bowl was there, full of cheap wine. So a sponge was soaked in the wine, put on a stalk of hyssop, and lifted up to his lips. Jesus drank the wine. It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Then the Jewish authorities asked Pilate to allow them to break the legs of the men who had been crucified and to take the bodies down from the crosses. They requested this because it was Friday and they did not want the bodies to stay on the crosses on the Sabbath since the coming Sabbath was especially holy. So the soldiers went and broke the legs of the first man and then of the other man who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they did not break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, plunged his spear into Jesus' side. And at once, blood and water poured out. The one who saw this happen has spoken of it, so that you may also believe. What he said is true, and he knows that he speaks the truth. This was done to make the scripture come true. Not one of his bones will be broken. And there is another scripture that says, people will look at him whom they pierced. After this, Joseph, who was from the town of Arimathea, asked Pilate if he could take Jesus' body. Joseph was a follower of Jesus, but in secret because he was afraid of the Jewish authorities. Pilate told him he could have the body, so Joseph went and took it away. Nicodemus, who at first had gone to see Jesus at night, went with Joseph taking with him about 100 pounds of spices, a mixture of myrrh and aloes. The two men took Jesus' body and wrapped it in linen cloths with the spices, according to the Jewish custom of preparing a body for burial. There was a garden in the place where Jesus had been put to death, and in it there was a new tomb where no one had ever been buried. Since it was the day before the Sabbath, and because the tomb was close by, they placed Jesus' body there. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the entrance. She went running to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Then Peter and the other disciple went to the tomb. The two of them were running, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and saw the linen cloths, but he did not go in. 
Behind him came Simon Peter, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the cloth which had been around Jesus' head. It was not lying with the linen cloths, but was rolled up by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture, which said that he must rise from death. Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb. And saw two angels there, dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head, the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? They asked her. They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have put him. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? She thought he was the gardener. So she said to him, If you took him away, sir, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary. She turned toward him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni. This means teacher. Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet gone back up to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to him who is my father and their father, my God and their God. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told her. It was late that Sunday evening and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. Unless I see the scars of the nails in his hand, and put my finger on those scars, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were together again indoors, and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you. Put your finger here and look at my hands. 
Then reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop your doubting and believe. My Lord. And my God. Do you believe? Because you see me. How happy are those who believe without seeing me? In his disciples' presence, Jesus performed many other miracles which are not written down in this book. But these have been written in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through your faith in him, you may have life. After this, Jesus appeared once more to his disciples at Lake Tiberias. This is how it happened. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel, the one from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples of Jesus were all together. Simon Peter said to the others, I'm going fishing. We will come with you, they told him. So they went out in a boat, but all that night they did not catch a thing. As the sun was rising, Jesus stood at the water's edge. But the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Young men, haven't you caught anything? Not a thing! Throw your net out on the right side of the boat, and you will catch some. So they threw the net out, In. because they had caught so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Peter heard that it was the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken his clothes off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples came to shore in the boat, pulling the net full of fish. They were not very far from land, about a hundred yards away. When they stepped ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught. Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net ashore full of big fish, 153 in all. Even though there were so many, still the net did not tear. Come and eat. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. So Jesus went over, took the bread, and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This, then, was the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from death. After they had eaten, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Take care of my lamb. A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. A third time, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, Do you love me? Peter became sad because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? 
And so he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. telling you the truth. When you were young, you used to get ready and go anywhere you wanted to. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you up and take you where you don't want to go. In saying this, Jesus was indicating the way in which Peter would die and bring glory to God. Then Jesus said to him, Follow me. Peter turned round and saw behind him that other disciple whom Jesus loved, the one who had leaned close to Jesus at the meal and had asked, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about this man? I want him to live until I come. What is that to you? Follow me. So a report spread among the followers of Jesus that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say he would not die. He said, if I want him to live until I come, what is that to you? He is the disciple who spoke of these things, the one who also wrote them down. And we know that what he said is true. Now there are many other things that Jesus did. If they were all written down one by one, I suppose that the whole world could not hold the books that would be written.